Hello guys, welcome to my tent. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the development of the liver and also we'll look at the clinical significance of the liver. If you haven't watched our video on the anatomy of the liver, we have discussed about its external features, lobes, what are the ligaments, relations, and also about the blood supply and the lymphatic drainage of the liver. Please make sure to watch the full playlist. Now let's come to the development of the liver. So the liver develops from a diverticulum called as the hepatic bud. So what happens? There is a hepatic bud which emerges from the uh, foregut. So this hepatic bud from the distal end of the foregut. Hepatic bud which arises from the distal end of the foregut. So it arises from the distal end of the foregut. So this hepatic bud which elongates cranially and it gives rise to two small accessory buds known as the pars cystica and the pars hepatica. We have the foregut right here, right? And then there is a hepatic bud which will arise and this will give rise to two buds. One is known as the pars cystica and another one known as the pars hepatica. So this is the foregut as we have discussed and this is the hepatic bud hepatic bud which will arrest cranially and it will give to two branches known as the pars hepatica and then we have the pars cystica so these are the two buds so what is the future of these two buds this pars hepatica will develop into the complete liver and this pars cystica will develop into the cystic duct along with the gallbladder so what happens so it gives rise to the small accessory bud on its right side it is called as the pars cystica which forms the cystic bud, cystic bud and the gallbladder so the main bud which is called as the pars hepatica it will grow into tra septum transversum it will grow into septum transversum so transversum so this will bifurcate and it will give rise to the right and the left hepatic ducts and the liver parenchyma so the septum transversum it will also contain vitelline veins and the umbilical veins it contains the vitelline veins and also the umbilical veins. It will divide into the right and the left hepatic and also give rise to the liver parenchyma. And then before the hepatic bud invades it. So these vessels will subdivide to form sinusoids. They will divide to form sinusoids. So which will invade the liver parenchyma and it will break it up into hepatic cords. They will divide into the sinusoids and they will break up into the hepatic cords. And the bile canoculi and ductules are also found in the liver parenchyma and thus they establish full connection with the extra hepatic bile ducts at a later stage. So this is about the development of the liver. Now let's look at the clinical significance of the liver. So coming to the clinicals of the liver. So firstly we will discussing about the segmental, segmental resection of the liver. So what is segmental resection of the liver? So there are eight hepatic segments, right? We have the posterior, superior, posterior, inferior, like that. We have eight hepatic segments. So the hepatic segments are not well defined. The hepatic segments, they are not well defined. So the hepatic segments are not well defined as the bronchopulmonary segments. So the anatomy of the hepatic segments is still of a controversy useful to us and therefore a true lobe rather than the segment should be resect resected in most in instances. As they are not well defined, we cannot resect the hepatic segment. A true lobe, true lobe can be resected. A large volume of liver, somewhat up to 80% of the liver can be removed safely because the healthy hepatocytes have great regenerative capacity. The healthy hepatocytes, they have great regenerative capacity so almost up to 80 percent of the liver can be removed safely and the liver can regrow to its original size in up to 6 to 12 months 6 to 12 months they'll regrow into the true size of the liver now let's discuss it about the uh, cirrhosis of the liver so coming to cirrhosis of the liver right in the what do you have in the cirrhosis of the liver so the hepatocytes which will sometimes undergo necrosis so there are hepatocytes in the liver, hepatocytes, so they will undergo necrosis. So the hepatocytes which will undergo necrosis if following their injury or death, injury or death, they will undergo necrosis, it may be caused by infection, toxins, alcohol or poisons. So the dead hepat hepatocytes are replaced by the fibrous tissue, fibrous tissue. When these hepatocytes are dead, they are replaced by the fibrous tissue by the proliferation, proliferation of the perilobular connective tissue. We have the proliferation of the perilobular, perilobular connective tissue. So the fibrous tissue is by the proliferation of the perilobular connective tissue. So the resultant hepatic fibrosis is clinically termed as the cirrhosis of the liver. 
so the patient will develop jaundice due to obstruction of the bile flow the patient may develop jaundice due to obstruction of the bile flow and resistance to blood flow through cirrhotic liver is increased which leads to increase of the pressure in the radicals of the portal vein so due to cirrhosis of the liver it may lead to portal hypertension so as portal vein and its tributaries are divided up as right so the increased venous pressure in the portal vein will cause engorgement and distension of the all its tributaries as well as spleen so this clinical condition is called as the portal hypertension so this is about the cirrhosis of the liver now let's discuss about the needle biopsy of the liver and also we will discuss about the surgical importance of the bare area of the liver now let's come into surgical importance of bare area of the liver bare area of the liver what is its surgical importance so the bare area of liver is is in indirect contact with the diaphragm it's in indirect contact indirect contact with the uh, diaphragm which uh, separates it from the uh, right pleural, pleural cavity it separates it from the right pleural cavity so what happens this is very important because it encloses the right extra peritoneal subphrenic space this will enclose the right extra peritoneal subphrenic space so we, are, we have discussed the complete anatomy of the subphrenic spaces in another video make sure to watch that video so in amoebic hepatitis the pus may collect in this phase in amoebic hepatitis so the pus may collect in the right extra peritoneal subphrenic space so if the pus collects in this space it forms a subphrenic abscess which may burst into the right pleural cavity through the diaphragm so the potential anastomosis of the venous capillaries will exist in the region of the bare area between the liver and the diaphragm so it becomes functional under certain pathological conditions like example portal hypertension it will become significant so this is about the bare area of the liver uh, now lastly coming to the needle biopsy of the liver so what is needle biopsy of the liver in needle biopsy of the liver the needle is inserted in the mid axillary line mid axillary line along the between the 9th and 10th intercostal space 9th and the 10th intercostal space and needle is inserted in into the mid axillary line so the needle passes through the chest wall and the costo diaphragmatic recess of the of the pleura and diaphragm and also the right anterior intraperitoneal space and then it will enter the liver and the needle is inserted above the eighth intercostal space it will injure the lung if the needle is inser inserted above the inter eighth intercostal space it will definitely injure the lung so this is about the needle biopsy of the liver so this is about the this video is also about the development of the liver and also about this clinical anatomy if you like the video make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and also share this video to other friends who are finding anatomy difficult thank you so much